Welcome to my review of this, the Boderi Voyager in bronze. 132 to $179, depends if it's on sale or not. Is this any good? Does a Chinese-made watch playing strong homage to a Batucci any good? This is the review for you. Is this something you should add to the collection? I believe this is a very fun watch, perfect for the fall or autumn season. Let's see why. Let's get on with it. The colorways available, there are three. There's this one and two others. You'll see from the pictures popping up what you can choose from. Same price for all of them, same spec for all of them, apart from the dial and hand color choices, which is very fun, very different. And if you don't like the standard strap, you can buy, if you want to, another few variations so you still keep the hardware. There's something I just want to get out of the way. First of all, I'm going to show you something. This. I cut this off. It's the first thing I did. I got this out the packaging and I cut it off and I'll show you why. Effectively, this is quite thick material. If you have this on there as well, adds a lot more bulk and thickness to the wrist. It sits off the wrist nearly, well, it's over 15 millimeters. And as it's only an 11 and a half mil thick watch, that is a lot. And it also makes the curvature of the strap wrapping around your wrist too much material going on. And it means that the available material left when it's wrapped around your wrist for tucking back is just not enough even for my average wrist size so i cut that off and it's a little life hack for trimming down and making any nato or zulo style strap a single pass and it enables you to get better fitment and it sits closer to your wrist so just starting the video off with a little life hack there who'd have thought this review would have started with a bit of helpful trickery going on but let's get on with the stats and specs i weighed this bronze beauty weighs 100 grams and that's including being on this strap and that included the piece which i trimmed off 100 meters water resistance, aided by the screw case back and then this screw down crown, which is 6.7 millimeters in size. So it's a nice big size crown. The case from here to here is only 40 millimeters. The length of the watch, which is the lug to lug from this point to this point is 48.6 millimeters. The lug width for your straps is 22 millimeters. Just while we're here, you get two different lug holes. And what that means is if you put this on a different strap, which again, I'll show you a bit later, you've got the option to have better fitment, which is very unusual to have that. These lugs are so big, that's why they've done it. But as you can see on the outermost spring bar position, you've got more clearance for very big chunky straps. The height without this strap is 11 and a half millimeters. So that's the bottom of the case back up to the top of this crystal here. But the actual crystal is ever so slightly recessed inside this bezel which is all integrated made of bronze of course. The dial is quite large I don't normally talk about dial sizes but it's a 31 mil dial so as field watches go very big clear and legible. The crystal is flat and it's made of synthetic sapphire which 99% of watches that's what they're made of. The movement inside is a Seiko NH35 with the date complication here at the four o'clock position. Running really well I had it on my time grapher running with well within tolerances ever so slightly fast happy with that no problem at all sand textured dials which is very nice you can see from a few macros i'll go into more detail again a bit later on blued hands loom in the hands and the arabics here which is very cool these arabics are actually far more legible when the light goes down <laughs> a bit tricky to read now but i'll chat more about that in a bit i went for this one because it's the most bonkers and it's most fun to share with you it's very different not seen a white dial blue hand bronze watch before so i was excited to share that with you guys and just a little bit more information about bronze cusn8 is the code name for this type of bronze bronze is effectively a tiny bit of an alloy it's got copper and a bit of tin and that's effectively what it is and what is the benefit of having bronze this time of year it's a lovely color it's the first thing that's just more of a personal taste this kind of warm earthy tone but the main reason why you have bronze on a watch is it ages it patinas when it's exposed to air and other contaminants if you will oils in your skin the more you touch it and rub it and feel it sorry if that sounds a bit dodgy just talking about your watch here it does age and by patinering, I mean, you can see it's starting to get some weird blobs of discoloration. It darkens over time. And that's something you can accelerate by putting it in certain conditions. For example, you can put it in with a freshly boiled egg in a bit of Tupperware overnight and it darkens up very quickly overnight. You can leave it for longer and do it repeatedly and it goes green even. And then you can revive it. There are cleaning methods back to being bright and shiny again if you wanted to do that. Let's get on with what I think 
are a few criticisms because I like to start with those because some of you, they may be deal breakers and you can move on and go and buy another watch somewhere else. Uh, the main deal breaker for me is this complicated, slightly awkward situation when it comes to straps. I'll show it to you on some straps in a bit, just to show you it can work. The standard strap is a bit of a monstrous beast and I'll show it to you on wrist now. Even with the extra bit removed, I'm halfway. Before it was, I was right up here because it was so much bulk. You feed it through here. And as you can see, even with my average wrist, there's not a huge amount of material left for the old tuck back. And leaving it like that, it just looks ridiculous. Uh, it looks like a kid with a school watch and they don't know how to use the keeps or anything. So you then end up with a very minimal amount of material just tucked back there, but it's okay. But look how hefty and chunky that looks. And then imagine it with an extra ring here, which is what it had. That's the first thing. It just looks monstrous with all that hardware. And for me, it could be a bit of a deal breaker, but because I know a lot about watch straps, I know that you can transform a watch by changing it out. So do bear that in mind and bear with. The next criticism, my own fault for choosing this colorway, is the fact the Arabics aren't that legible. They almost get lost in there because of the very faint red outline around the Arabics. Obviously, it matches this lovely track going around the outer edge here. That is just a slight issue when it comes to legibility. And some people might say it looks a little bit like a clown's watch because of the really funky colors. But you know what? I want fun sometimes. Uh, if this is a fun watch you can have in the collection and you don't like the other more neutral, earthy toned colorways you can get for this watch, this is just something different, a bit bonkers. And I like that. But it's also a criticism because it's a bit out there, isn't it? These lugs are very long and that is going to, again, aid the wearability for how it looks on other straps. They are so long. So now those few moans and niggles are out of the way, let's talk about the positives. It's fun, it's handsome, it looks so different to so many other watches on the market. There's not much else out there that you're gonna find for A, this price, which is another positive. With these kind of looks, this specification, all that stuff adds up to being, this is a good value package. The loom is decent for a field watch, but not breathtaking. And I'd say that really helps lift this up when the light dims down, which I'll quickly show you now as a, again, just to show you. I mean, I haven't charged this under a UV light and I just think it really pops. I think it looks fantastic. Really neat, good application of loom. I just love it. Look at it. Oh, so I've got my loom addiction out of the way. Let's talk about some other positives. The only tactile thing is the crown, which has nice screwing action. I love talking about screwing action because it's an important aspect to ownership of a watch. If it's unpleasant, we're not going to enjoy the watch, are we? Just like many things in life if you don't have a good screwing action but this hand alignment spot on these blued hands are gorgeous they really pop and contrast against that dial white blue red they all work together really well yes it's a bit quirky so am i and people miraculously watch my videos and i like the fact you've got the blue hands matching the word automatic there in blue the word voyager matching all the lovely arabics and the inner 24-hour track that you get on a lot of field style watches and then this raised effect you've got with this train track. If you look around there, it's not just printed. It looks like it's ever so slightly raised, as are the Arabics. So much depth and texture to this dial. It's one of those things that draws you in, but it's just under natural light. It really is beautiful. It's got a slight silvery tone to it. It's like a pearl white. And I just think, again, that is just so fun and different. Not something you see very often. Boderi is a slightly weird name, but I think it's cool enough. It's better than many other Chinese brand names I've heard of. And the build quality is rather good. The brushing is neat on the sides. Really lovely, consistent. No rough edges anywhere. No polishing anywhere. It's just a full on brushed case everywhere. So that adds to the utilitarian look, rather rugged. And then we go to the case back, which again, remarkable for an affordable watch. Lovely steering wheel. <laughs> Lovely wheel you would get on a ship there. Nautical theme, you're a voyager, you're gonna sail on a boat. And you've got brushing, a few details, very nicely done. So this is where I'm gonna now talk about something I don't always share in my videos, and that's doing some strap changes, because this watch is benefiting from showing you how it will look on some other options. So I'm gonna start off with popping it on this new style, no time to die bond strap. I like this because I picked it out the collection because it's got the silver to match the case back. And it's got this slightly goldy color to match the case. I know the hardware is not bronze, but we can live with that because the case back is uh, brushed stainless steel. So as long as there's something on the watch which matches it, you can get away with it. I don't think this looks too bad. I think this works. It helps break it up a bit, have a bit of stripey action going on. I know the hardware doesn't quite match, but you know what? This is a playful watch. Get a playful strap on there as well. That also sounded a bit dodgy. Many apologies. 
A couple more here I want to show. These are some rubbers I've got in the collection and I want to put these on here. I chose blue because it matches the hands. And then we've got green because it's an earthy tone and should hopefully contrast well with the bronze. Let's see how they look. Here we go, the blue. I reckon this works fabulously with this watch. Blue hands really popping with the blue strap. Ah, never seen blue work so well with bronze. Who'd have thought? I really think that's good. What do you guys think? Well, I'm sorry guys, this is the one. The green with the texture on it. Oh, goes so well with the bronze. Earthy tones, perfect for autumn, perfect for any time of year. Rubber strap, 100 meters water resist. It's the kind of strap you should put on this if you want to go on a hot day or in the sea or in the beach or it's raining or anything like that. You don't want to get a manky leather strap. Makes it fit so much better on the wrist. And I know there's a big old lug gap there. That's a bit of a problem. Look at the size of that. Anyway, um, it's still, still think it looks good. Maybe it's good for breathability. It allows the watch to not get too hot and sweaty on your wrist. There's a positive, there you go. But you know what? I think that works so beautifully, the texture. I used to sell these straps, so I can't unfortunately sell this to you anymore, but there's plenty of competition on eBay. That's why I used to sell mine. So do have a look and they are great quality, FKM rubber, but you know, it's just another way you can accessorize your watch and just make it look so much better. And it's not very expensive to do so. So there you go. So if you've enjoyed my take on this watch and my little mini review here, please do consider subscribing. I'm aiming to get this channel to at least Mr. Beast levels by Christmas. I know that's unreasonable, but anyway, it's worth a try. This is just a little pokey review channel and I like to have fun and share these watches with you. They're affordable, fun, different, and that's a little bit like me. So thanks again for watching. I'll see you in the near future for another review. Bye for now.